Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Steven here. Uh, April is coming to a close, but there are some pretty important anniversaries uh, this month in rock. Most notably, the first one that I'll be talking about is the 38th anniversary of the ninth album from Journey called Raised on Radio. This was their follow-up to the mega seller Frontiers, which sold roughly about 6 million units at the time. After Frontiers, the band kind of went their separate ways, did solo projects. Steve Perry was probably the most successful one with his Street Talk album, which had the mega hit single, Oh Sherry. Um, at that point, his mom is getting ill. He's kind of contemplating leaving the business. He gets a call from Jonathan Kane, the keyboardist of the band, saying, look, I got some unfinished material. I think I got a, enough songs for a follow-up to Frontiers. Are you in? He's not sure. Steve Perry's mom says, yeah, you should do this. But Steve Perry decides, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to produce this album. There's no one better to keep Journey's signature sound than one of the key members of the band. Jonathan Cain then, um, guitarist Neil Sean and Steve Perry set up bass in Jonathan Cain's house. They use this new new kind of technology where there is machine-driven demos that dictate the parts to the musicians. So the bass parts and the drumming parts were kind of done already and handed over to bassist Ross Valroy and drummer Steve Smith, who were used to developing their sound organically in the studio with the band. So this was kind of like where the tensions began. And Steve Perry ultimately decided to fire these two members and bring in session musicians. Most notably is Randy Jackson, known for American Idol. The album comes out. There are five singles released. It sells over 2 million units. I remember there was a certain backlash to this album because, first of all, two members were fired. So bad press comes out. You know, like you got rid of two, two guys who've been there forever. You can't do that. Back in the day, you could do that. Like I said in other um, podcasts, David Lee Roth, when he left and Sammy Hagar came in, people hated Sammy Hagar. Uh, Kiss, Peter Chris, and Ace Fraley, no one accepted replacements for them ever. They've had a hard time since day one. It never ended. This was no different. People said, oh my God, you got, you fired, Steve Perry fired these guys. He's taken over the band. Steve Perry's a prima donna, lead singer syndrome. Steve Perry said he wanted to keep the band's signature sound and there was no one better to do it than a key, than a founding, not a founding member, but a key member of the band. He's also mentioned in interviews that he regrets firing the two guys and if he could do it again, he would do it differently. So he has manned up, he has admitted to his mistakes, so I'm okay with this. Now the album overall, I think there's a lot of great tracks on here. Girl Can't Help It, Positive Touch, Suzanne, Be Good to Yourself, I'll Be Alright Without You, and Why Can't This Night Go On Forever, I think are great additions to your Journey playlist. Um, it does sound a little dated with the um, the machine-driven demos that these session musicians kind of went over, so it does sound mechanical 80s down drumming so that does take away from it but what is the saving grace on this of course steve perry's vocals are phenomenal and jonathan kane's guitar work this could have been street talk part two but he elevates it to a little bit higher standard than that to his guitar wizardry in my opinion is it the greatest journey album of them all no is it a fun pop rock album hell yeah and you know what? With a voice like Steve Perry, he's one of the greats. And Neil Sean, if you listen to the guitar on there, it's not in the forefront, but it's there. If you listen to it, he's there. And he does a really good job in bringing these songs out a little bit more. This could have been, like I said, a really uh, like a street talk part two. But it really has its own little feel to it. Like I said, it's the drumming that sounds a little 80s and a little old that way and a little dated. But all in all... I really like this album. This was my first Journey album. This was the first time I started having my own money. I went to the store. I said, oh my God, Journey, I'm picking it up. You know, because I had a Journey Greatest Hits. I said, okay, let me start with this and then I'll backtrack, look at where these songs come from and, and I'll, I'll, I'll build up my collection. I think it's a good follow-up. I like it. I enjoy it. Like I said, it's just 
it does sound a little dated, but Steve Perry's voice and, and, and Neil Sean's guitar work here are the heroes and they saved this record. Um, but that's my opinion. You let me know what you think. Do you like this album? Do you hate this album? But since it's only the three of them now taking over, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Share them down below. I'm going to post a video or something. You let me know what you think of this album. We'd love to hear from you. This is Stephen from The Roundtable celebrating 38 years of Raised On Radio from Journey.